pace yet. Yeah, it's very true. It's not very often we see that, but we've seen teams like Cloud9 try to pull off the Viper pick, and Hayes is going to try to replicate some of that action. And, well, this is an aggressive peak from Sabrosa, and the third challenge will be his last challenge as CP2 will find first blood. Straight up mid, yep. There's going to be a lot of info towards what's happening over on BE Heaven. Flash is a good so far. But some should be able to get the clear on XP though. He needs to look for the trade here coming through from the rest of his teammates. They do so drone. Last one alive now. He had a 1v1 2 before, 1v1 yep. before on 1 HP. Now it's a 1 versus 4 and he'll get taken down very quickly. That is a standard anti-eco from Renegade just losing the one member. To potential of a blade storm might not be needed here, but will Hayes be caught off? And yeah, okay, he's gonna read the information back up. Snake bite and poison cloud will be put down. Retro's gonna go right through this though. And he's already on site. If he can find one, it would be incredible for the effort. He's trying to spam for the second, but at least he's able to stay alive. Hayes not gonna expect the second challenger to be coming around the back from the spike site and Renegades. I don't know if they just caught TSM off guard with the weapons they were able to buy into this round or what, but they again cleanly take the B site. Well, they definitely caught TSM off guard in terms of the members of where they're holding in terms of anchoring here for TSM. It was just hazed over towards B. Tried to hold that one solo, but Retro and Winsome beat the timing. Still two plays alive for TSM. The retake is looking very unlikely despite Waldell getting one kill on the Retro. Four is still alive. Showstopper is also available should things get hairy, but Winsome will find the trigger. On to Wardell from behind, and Renegades for it. will have the ability to go straight over towards a Blade Storm. Retro is going to be able to push forward. Cutler trying to hold on, and Drone actually is able to find first blood. Now Cutler from the site. He'll take down the Showstopper. Nothing there for Winsome. Beautiful hold so far for TSM, and Wardell will find the third kill with the Blade Storm up close and personal. TSM look like they're pretty comfortable this round now. And every single round that we've seen so far seems to go fairly one-sided in some cases, where one team will get a large number of kills, and the other team just... Feel the hurt, and there's Bergy and CP2 once more, the, the ones that are alive. Another 2v4 situation. Showstopper being shut down is so huge. You also notice, by the way, Renegades, after showing a lot of B aggression, this is their first proper A hit. And you also did see that, by the way, for TSM, Subrosa went over towards B this time. They had a double anchor over there. Wardell started dropping off of A after seeing no early aggression. Yeah. Renegades maybe just waited a few seconds longer. Wardell would have started making his way over towards B. They would have a better chance going on towards A. And Renegades might still want to go for this one. you got to remember that we've seen this play from not just Renegades, but other teams in the past when they got the showstopper. They'll double blast pack up to the high ground instead of trying to go through A ramp. That's the second time that we've seen that in the last two days. And it has not come through successfully. So there's something to be tight early on and spike is committed over towards a but it will be a bit of a fake from retro on towards b double cloud burst that's actually going to get wardell into a position to where he's got to be pretty careful here all the shots from Hayes are going to be good enough to clean things up in wardell actually i don't even know if he gives away his full position but that's all just bait the spike is making its way over to a and when some will take over the a tower this time drone is his position known though is the question and Looks like it was, as Winston will finalize the kill, and the bait play just from Retro alone is actually going to be successful for Renegades now in a 4v2 post plant. Winston also backing into Drone. First play that turns around, spots together, does get that kill. It's another 4v2 situation. Viper's pit into plate as well. This will help Hayes get onto site with Wardell. Time is going to tick down, feeling soon. They need to find these kills. Bergy down nice and early. Still three alive, most of them offside, most of them outside of the Viper's pit. Challenge for Randy Savage will be successful. And now Wardell, one versus three. Low HP coming through for Randy Savage, but when someone will get the trade. We'll keep it up. And interestingly enough, Renegades are going to send three members through the mid-map. So if they could get information, this could be a gut check call. And here it is. The Bros is going to be here with this play. The Rolling Thunder will be good for at least one kill. Everybody else, though, from Renegades will stay safe as they back up towards Sewer and towards the mid-market. And even beyond that, Bergie's allowed to get a trade, so we go 4v4. Hayes has also pushed up over towards B main, so they have a lot of information. That's why they felt the confidence to cut the Rolling Thunder down mid. Play is surviving, though. Only Winsome went down. A nice counter flash coming through from CP2 just to keep TSM locked up to try and follow that Rolling Thunder. Opportunity for Sub Rosa, though. Tries to see if he can catch any plays through the smoke. He will get flashed out. That's really unfortunate as he can't even make it out alive. Retro gets that kill of Renegades have a one-man advantage. Wardell has to find two here. If this push to Renegades continues to come through middle, he needs to find two. He avoids the first flash. That's going to be number one, but no. Retro's in the duck underneath of it. And now immediately it's going to be a rotation. Get up towards a tower, which... Okay, hold on a second. Cutler's actually fully set up for this play. He's got the alarm bot. He's got two nano swarms, And he's got his sentry turret that's now going to be activated. So for Renegades, if they commit to this... 
Cutler could actually find a lot of value here just by holding his life in the backside of this billboard. Gonna be able to find the first. That's the spike carrier down. 20 seconds to play. Renegades are going to be starting to overwhelm. Hayes is on the rotation, but he's going to be late. And Cutler getting spammed through this board. We'll actually find a second kill. Now you're down to 11 seconds. He's going to find number three to the classic, not going to get CP2. The time will require CP2 to pick the spike up and immediately plant. Snake bite will be tossed out, and we're going to get a 1v1. Cutler has done all he needs to do just to hold on for as long as possible. Hayes making his way over from B. The 1v1 contact should just be imminent right now. CP2 to one trade on the ultimates. No winners or losers in that exchange. TSM, however, however, lost a lot of the utility coming through from Hayes. So I believe both snake bites are gone and Wardell finally gets a customer but goes down. Okay. CP2 through the wall. Not often you see that interaction go the way of the player who's battle up against Wardell. But now Renegades with 20 seconds. They only have one member to deal with. It's just Drone. From the Shadows, it's going to be plays. This is Subrosa going to commit to this A long, but Drone can't even find a single kill. And now on the backside, Winsome reads Subrosa beautifully. Renegades, how have you pulled this back at the last second? It's a 2v4. You still have a showstopper. You still have the ability for Rolling Thunder if you need it. But as Hayes starts to make his way in with his Toxic Wall, he's going to try to take over the top side of A. And Cutler really can't do anything until space is cleared for him to make a move onto the site itself. And TSM are in a real bind right now, in a real pickle. Do they save here? Do they oh. go for the something? There's also an operator on the floor where Will Wardell's body is over towards Vince. I mean, this looks like seven already. This looks like a very successful round for Renegades. It didn't start that way again. They lost a player early. Bergy ult straight into drone. For CP2 opening things up versus Wardell over towards mid. The rest of Renegades rushing over on A. Drone can't hold on to A by himself. Can't quite do the miracle work, similar to what we saw Cutler do a previous round. And there it is, Renegades. And the best part about this for Renegades is they get to walk as far as, again, the statistical battle between both teams over 60%, respectively, for their defense and for Renegades on their attack. The good news here for Renegades is not only have you pretty much passed that part, but you're at a position now where... You have to deal with TSM and maybe even stretch this lead a little bit further. Opening trade will come through as Renegades quickly make their way onto the A side, and TSM will be forced to consider how do you retake with no ultimates. And straight away, they've locked Wardell out as well. Flash is coming on in full execute. Multiple smokes being placed, and a lot of control being given over towards screens. Look how many Renegades players are there. Off site as well. Look at CP2 rolling thunder at the ready just in case. Things get out of hand. TSM need to use a lot of util to get in. They might have one flash available via Sub Rosa. Holding it out now. That paranoia has to do work. This is taking a long time to come through and Oh, Retro will find two. Not going to get the third, but it's a 2v2. You still have the Rolling Thunder. And Bergy, who's playing from inside the site, is going to get timing onto one. You don't even need it, but they're still going to use it just to secure round number eight. It's just Wardell left with the Operator. That is not a safe play anymore. Bergy will throw a counter paranoia out as we still have this battle going on over towards B main garage, but it looks like both players will back away and Wardell up top has to respond to two and he does. Beautiful pickups for Wardell. That's weapons on the ground. And now Renegades, what do you do in a 3v5 situation with 60 seconds to play? I think this is the first time we're seeing so far on this half where the team that actually has the guns are kind of losing and maybe a True. successful force buy slash half buy from TSM. As the gun upgrades will be there. You see Hayes going over there to pick something up. Wardell will have a rifle now as well. Oh, drone gets a kill to Randy. And this is falling apart. Renegades had full equipment walking into this one. They're stuck between a rock and a hard place. I feel like maybe Cutler knows something's up. He certainly does. Drone's here as well. The flash comes through and the cleanup will follow. One alive now. Retro versus five. I don't know if Retro's going to get anything done. Might want to go for a cheeky plant or something just to secure a little bit more extra money. But his life will be forfeit. Spike does go down successfully. Retro, this would be probably one of the more incredible 1v5s we've ever seen, and he will only take down one. And So it won't be flawless for TSM, but they're going to be able to upgrade every single weapon to an AR, which is incredible for them to try to bring this half back yeah. and make it at least salvageable. TSM after all, but Giver versus Slug and Dogman. Renegades had been dropped in Ecos. Here comes Hayes versus oh, quite okay. a few. Sub Rosa down. And there it is, just as TSM started to get on the board, they dropped two members. And there was just no utility there. I mean, maybe a couple of things were thrown out and you didn't really get a full look at how that battle started, but there, I didn't see a Paranoia come out, didn't see a Dark Cover come out, didn't see a Snake Fight come through. Winsome is just going to absolutely punish Cutler and he'll find the fourth on... Del gets to hold up aggressively over towards B Tower. Now that they're on the attack, TSM, what are they going to do? Go aggressive on towards A, they get one kill. 
And how about this? It's again one of those strategies that we talked about that Hayes loves to kind of lurk by himself offensively towards A. DSM realizing that Renegades are aware. They just overwhelm and they take two kills. So now it's going to be a 5v3. That said, though, you've got Wardell and Hayes that are on tragically low health. Wardell is going to be playing with just a buck. He's going to have a hard time clearing up the A towers by himself. Unless Retro decides he wants to lurk closer over towards this connector, they'll be on opposite sides of the wall from one another. But while this has all occurred, the spike has made its way on and TSM should be able to get a plant. Yikes. Renegades one of the options here. One opening kill is going to be decent. They need to secure more than this, though. The trades are still somewhat favoring TSM. The HP bar is not so much so. So Renegades can maybe find Drone and Wardell. We're about a one shot away. Currently, that would be really doing wonders for their retake attempt now as a tap on the spike comes through as well one versus two does randy go for the half here i think so wouldn't this one be one because wardell's also low but i think time is just working against him the opening cup will be very strong with him in combination to bergy this could be a really big play renegades are going to be set up for this one they know it's going to be a hit coming through from b main now and that's where the kills come through as well Two alive now. It's always for some reason you look towards the Omen and the uh, Breach plays, but this time it's sub Rose and Drone, so those two players are at least fairly deep right now. One of them is. One sub Rose is all the way over towards Spawn. He goes down, Drone on his own, so 1v5, and unfortunately TSM are not going to bring this one home. Yeah, it's just a gamble stack for TSM, right? Shells, and he's able to avoid most of the damage. One more cloud burst down, but he's not gonna be able to survive through the boom box. So win some for the first blood. Randy Savage is second. You just got to hope that Sub Rosa can find something, but he's gotta go now. He also triggered the alarm bot, by the way, so they know he's definitely there. Drone will get a kill as well, and it's Randy Savage shuts Sub Rosa down. Retro on the drone. A couple of kills do come through, but it's not enough. Renegades secured 12, and that was a full retake as well, Shift, because I'm Sub Rosa. I'm not going to stall too much of this hit as the spike will make its way on. It's Drone who's carrying it. He'll throw it into the very top right corner of the minimap. And the Renegades are not here initially for a quick retake. So you've got the potential to start setting things up for what needs to be a Rolling Thunder here. You feel like Winsome, though, through the smoke will find two? Are you kidding? And now Hayes is trying to make his way over, but you've got the defensive lockdown that's coming through. Rolling Thunder going to be played. Drone has to push through this. He finds one. Snaps to a second. Not going to get a third. And but Winsome trying to make play out of the Showstopper. Also going to come up empty. Two HP for Retro in the 1v1. This one's going to come down to the wire. Cutlet's got full HP to work with though, so you do really think that TSM should be able to win this one outside of any extreme shots come from Retro, the knives will go miss. Space for Cutler to stay alive over towards A main because Renegades have to clear off their defensive spawn. This time though, it's going to be again, TSM aggressive off the rip, trying to make their way over to B and the trades will favor them. Two for one it goes and with that, Sabrosa will also clear up CP2. We've got a 4v2 and TSM again will get the spike down quick. Oh, here we go. That's the kind of round that we need from TSM because Renegades are finally low on members. Again, I don't think the team that's been on the two side of the 2v4 has actually won yet. A lot of ultimates in play for, as well for TSM. And things get really bad. The Vipers Pit lockdown are there. Plenty of members off site. Plenty of members still holding site. Hey, so let me first point of contact here. Doesn't realize there's one player over towards heaven. Here we go. Swings on him. Win some. Starts to whittle down the numbers of TSM for the possible shells. retake. That's a great paint shells. Drone's gonna fall, and he gets a second! No way! Now onto the site. It's just down to Sabrosa for a 1v2. All he has is the shot of the cover charges, and gets is gonna stick for the defuse. Forget everything you knew! You're likely not gonna expect to win, but just again, I want to just hammer this one point home. The fact that the last time these two teams played, it was a two-round differential. Both teams found most of their success offensively. So if Renegades, again, can get things going defensively here, they'd put themselves in a great spot to potentially find themselves a 2-0. Bergy, the Thug Waffle, he's going to find himself one. They're actually going to be able to read a second coming through. He's got help from Retro, who will double up as well. And TSM, they will exit over to the middle of the map over towards C, but CP2 is here. He's actually walked right by Sabrosa. So no one's going to expect CP2 to be here. Sabrosa's got his back turned to him. Neither player will will expect each other to be literally touching butts there for a moment, but Retro will find the third kill and the defuse with it. Do a couple of Sheriff upgrades with the three Spectres they hold down to from the previous round. Straight up aggression coming through for TSM over towards C-Long as well. It's a one-for-one -one trade nice and early. A Burgess SMG does secure one, so 
as the team that does have rifles coming into this one, TSM don't want to be dropping that gun over. It won't be able to be retrieved unless TSM fall off from C completely and go back towards more of a B or an A. Massive stack coming out through from Renegade. Sabrosa through the garage will find another, and this is going to be C opened up. Now Sabrosa with three, and the round is most likely over. Randy on Justice Sheriff is unlikely to hold on. Just comes down to can he find some exit kills at this point. He might not even get the opportunity for that as he's got Sabrosa with a hot hand near him. And he will get a read also with that onto Drone, but it will be Sabrosa for four. Beautiful headshots and can take out Renegades. They will be pretty hard pressed to bring full rifles to the round coming up after this. And Winsome is going to catch Hayes again aggressively, just pushing through. Hayes caught in his spy cam, no problem. Yeah, CP2 wait, wait. might be challenged here in the middle. There is the Bladestorm finally coming out for Renegades over towards C Long, but a 5v4 and TSM are not committing with the spike as they're holding it still back mid map. And here we go. The smoke actually helps out CP2 quite a lot. He might walk into it, but straight into Wardell, who challenged the smoke directly. CP2 maybe losing a bit of patience there. In any case, I mean, possibly unlucky as well. Speaking of unlucky, Retro, no idea that Sabrosa is on the other side of the smoke. Will dissipate. And another kill being brought through. So TSM losing one early, but they get two back. Empress? Speaking of two back, win some and Bergy. Oh. Empress is available. Won't need to be popped here as Sabrosa wants to exit this situation. Sabrosa's going to try to play for the clutch up from B window. You see his teammates pinging for the spike, but it's being diffused and no shots will connect. Renegades pull it back on the backhand. This is going to throw this into a corner. And Renegades who avoided nice getting play. information given onto them will have a chance to potentially overwhelm just by hitting from the front. Well, it's going to have to be the five-man retake from Renegades there, despite uh, Drone not really getting too much out of the run of back in terms of kills. He's cleared the site, and sometimes that's the most important thing. Speaking of clear, the Empress has gone straight away. Hayes connecting that headshot, and this is going to be a very clean post point from TSM. They'll be able to get all the kills required. Sabrosa for another three and Renegade from Renegades. But Hayes with the W on that 1v1. Stops the Empress from coming through. And Winsome going to get aggressive again with Fergie, but both will be taken down. And these are favorable trades for TSM in a 3v2 situation for the rest of the round. Winsome decides not to dismiss either. I don't know if the dismiss would have gotten him away necessarily, but... In either case, to make a couple of trades happen, Renegades going to open up sites with those Hunter's Furies. Retro, he's going to be oh, stuck inside a dark cover. Wardell on the back will take care of Randy. But still, no one has covered out Retro. He finds one. He gets a second and immediately tailwinds away. The two kills, very valuable. Stalls the spike plant for now. And keep your eye on the long flank. It was oh, Winsome who was trying to make a cheeky play. But Hazed finds the kill. Now CP2 trying to delay the plant for as long as possible. Actually connects on the Cutler for the kill. And Renegades will have a 3v2. Still, no spike been planted. And there you go, Renegades just need to pop in, get a couple of kills, dash away, get a kill via the Hunter's Fury as well, stopping the plant. The worst part about that for TSM is they lose their own Hunter's Fury for the post plant. There will now be two versus two. An opportunity here for both sides. Wardell, this is his time, this is his moment, and Wardell, there it is, he doesn't miss. Well, he does sometimes, but not really run away with their economy at the moment. Yeah, they got three rounds in a row. This should be number four in a row as well. Renegades have not had much success on their Ecos. I say that, but Retro, the second time in a row, by the way, that Retro just gets to go through Garage, get a free kill and dash away. There's a lot of information, Red, as well, as Cutler's going to try to play from on top of the double stack backside site. He also sees the Aldrum, but will be shrugged off the angle, able to find one in return. Now the Paranoia is going to come through. Shock Dart will be a touch short. And for Renegades, again, you're looking for a long flank play from Randy Savage. The Cypher in blue on your minimap trying to work his way around will not actually go for the full flank. Maybe just trying to stop for any post plant stuff to be here at C long. And as Randy will get information on Wardell, the second peak will be good. Bladestorm, though, for Retro at 3v3. If you can find one more, it'd be incredible to see if teams with the final elimination. Wardell, 2v2 situation. Cloud burst down. Hunter's Fury still is existing. We'll allow them to be popped in here, and Cutler will find one kill. Wardell, another triple, two rounds in a row. And on covered, you have Garage covered, but Randy's still on C site for some reason. He needs to be the one to fall off here, or somebody from Garage. Richard is thinking about pushing up right now. The plant has come through on towards B. Should be a fairly safe post plant here as TSM get themselves out alive. Five alive, in fact. And that is going to mean this retake is going to be super hard. 
Big stack for TSM in the B window. Double hit coming out of Seed Garage. The Broza, he's equal to one. Not gonna get the second. You also have to keep in mind that you've got the potential to flank from Retro. Wardell with the Operator though will find another kill. Winsome coming out. He finds a big pick and just misses away. Long range shots, but can't connect another Cutler. TSM take. Randy is gonna be home this time around, so criticism has been met. And they have moved Randy <laughs> off. He does see everybody. He knows the plant's coming, and this is where Renegades have to activate. If Randy can find one, it would be incredible for Renegades defensively. You've got nothing on the backside playing through. Hayes will find first blood. Randy not able to do the job that we said he needed to. Empress now going to be popped. CP2 with the recon bolt coming through. And now the Paranoia as well being sent out, but Sabrosa finds the next kill. CP2 up top. Nothing for him as Sabrosa is able to double through. It's going to have to be down to the Empress play of Winsome. He's got to go absolutely ham bony if he wants to try to find a way to come through. But he can't even find a first kill. A flawless round for TSM to clean up the first half for a potential retake. It's going to be a full 4v5 retake Spike here planted. on pistols nonetheless. Cutler on a shorty as well. It's not going to feel really comfortable. Most of the angles have been covered. The only player they can isolate early is going to be Retro, who's, I believe, playing in hell right now. And TSM are going to need to rush him down as fast as possible because the rest of Renegades are way off sight. So when things do start to get hairy here, the range advantage is going to be there for Renegades. And TSM really aren't even giving this a full try. <laughs> Opportunity for a 1v1 here. Retro with the superior weapon will win it. And there's just not enough time here for this retake for TSM. And they're going to realize that pretty quickly as the last two members will just likely back away. Although Cutler's going to try to see if he can find maybe one more player. As you're going to just drop the shorty for a he sheriff and then back away. It's going to be close. But back just an offensive hit towards C long. They'll break through the trap wire. One more will be down. Retro will deal with it. But Hayes oh walks away with two through the dark cover. He's got more in front. There's number three and four. The ace right around the corner. Can he secure it? Yes, he can. Hayes for five and TSM on ten. Play the Uno reverse card. This time TSM is dominating. Somewhat expected, maybe. The Blaisom does get pulled oh. through. And this, down. this is Retro V3. It's a triple stack for TSM through A long. And as they start to push players back, Drone might have to live the rest of the round over here. He doesn't have a lot of exit strategies. Unless there's a couple of picks from Mordell to allow him to be freed up. The Owl Drone will be dealt with. Curveball still being held. It comes through, but Winsome reads the play beautifully. So Renegade's now in a 5v3. Still have the Blade Storm out for Retro as they consider which direction they want to go. The Spike is still being held very passively towards their spawn. And they have time to work with here. 50 seconds remaining. They don't need to overcommit over towards A. They have to assume that TSM have rotated. In reality, though, Sabrosa is near, but he's still hanging around B. The default for TSM might end up being a 1-1-1 now. Well, Dale's going to look for a little bit of information after that. Should give the info to TSM to hold on to their positioning over towards B and C. And now comes Renegades. Left. Five met up C long. Last 30 seconds. Hayes will be up for the first defense. Oh, and you think that might just be enough? There's the Tailwind Dash coming through. Hayes finds the first. Sabrosa a second. There's number three. Hayes looking to replicate some of his magic. He's got one more to deal with. And the right click from Hayes will once again clutch things up for TSM. Nice to go for the stick. Thought that the hot hands was going to be enough, but the, the spike one just barely in line for Retro. Next round coming through, though, as we start getting into the action. Wardell's going to shut down Winsome again, and following that, so we see it too. Man, it's going to be down to Hayes, though, to try to lock things up. This has been a tight 1v1 battle. Hayes will get another triple in. Over through B main. Winsome holding a Leer. Is this going to be the execute call? As you see the dark cover come through. That's not just over towards the defensive spot. It's also the mid market. Leer paranoia can be called in, but Hayes stays alive only for a time. He eventually gets spammed out. A little bounce pass off the shock guard actually connects for the majority of Sabrosa's HP. And as Wardell doesn't feel confident enough to push through this dark cover, that's going to lead to Renegades on the site and with a spike plan early. Yeah, and they do have a member offside as well. Really important to have a Sova play. CP2 still holding in B main. So Bros might want to clear that one out. Spamming through. He will go for this challenge. Isn't looking the right direction. Just hit 66 HP. A CP2 will give it up, but that's fine. Still can use a lot of utility there. Still numbers alive for Renegades, and that's the important thing. And you either have to commit to try to make this play and the kill over to CP2, or you have to give it up and just full flood over. They're going to be able to do both. Actually, this is incredible right now for TSM as they get spam shots through the walls onto Winsome. Bergy now left alone with Randy. Now it's just Randy. He's able to find the first. The player on the spike going for the spam shots connects for a little bit, but good help coming through as Sabrosa cleans things up. And TSM pull away the round and whip that. Them right now would be a great place to start.
Sabrosa, corner, being held, not going to find the angle. Wardell is good for one. Paranoia comes through, but the spam shots from CP2 just a touch better. So an even trade. Exactly right. Actually, pardon me, that's a two-for-one trade. As Renegades will have the numbers, but you still have Hazed on site with some utility to play with. Nanostorm will be popped. He's going to have some help here from Drone as he'll get his flashpoints into the mix. And Renegades, this is not a place you want to be stuck in for long. They're going to eventually commit on. Hayes trying to stay alive. Going to get maybe an opportunity for a re, but the timing as Randy Savage came from behind was not incredible. The retake is still going to be pretty close by, but in a 2v4 situation, it really comes down to can you isolate any kills before you actually commit if you're going to go. And that might be an isolated kill right there, and it is. Drone able to find CP2, now a 2v3. The last three are on site as well. They're taking care of the threat outside of the site. No one in market as you'd expect. Here we go, Rosa. That's what Drone has been working on since the previous round. Cut them down early. Drone has to do it or gets to. One more still in there. The flash doesn't come in. And Bergy. Sometimes he does miss, apparently. TSM, though. Still have a major weapons advantage here. There it is. That's Wardell finally connecting. And TSM will get there one nice and early. Renegades, by the way, Spike is still very uncommitted. They're getting quite aggressive. They'll need to maybe get a little bit of cleanup, get a couple of kills. Retro has popped the blaze on them. Then they can go back and retrieve the Spike. We'll take it over the garden, but as Randy tries to play for a knife break up the wall, <laughs> Drone will just instantly take down him plus his teammate, and then the third back over towards a main match. You need more participation from your Reyna. We'll get into that here in a moment as we've got Hunter's Furies that are coming out. Wardell will trade out the opening first. Blood Retro will actually find a second, though. So now the Operator is on the floor. And how about that shot from Retro? He'll find himself a third. Now understanding that the Omen's going to be playing over towards Tree is going to take the challenge nearly catches Sabrosa out in the reload, but Sabrosa's still alive. We'll find one, and what is that shot from Sabrosa? Now a 1v2. 43 HP, definitely doable, but not nearly as healthy as he would hope. He tries to bait the teleport, thinking that, hey, I'm in my dark cover. But little do Renegades know that he is not, and he's trying to make a play on the backside of the spike. One member down low in hell, he'll catch the information, but a target ready against getting aggressive. This is where you need to get participation from your duelist. Winston will be hit by the alarm bot, deleted by Sabrosa as he finds himself a second. But Retro, who's gotten under the site, exactly. is actually looking to clear up a little bit of space. Neural theft is going to come through. This is a lot of information. But Retro's not going to reveal his position as of yet, and Hayes uh. able to snap to him. So now a 4v2. TSM with the numbers, even though Renegades will get the spike planted. And now it's down just to one Randy for the 1v4. And the dominoes are falling quickly here. Randy, the last domino, will be toppled in just a second. Hazed, even with the classic right, can at least get one more round here. Shoulder peak coming through. It will bait out a shot from Wardell. He'll cover his retreat backwards, but Renegades are just going to dive right through this. And how about this call off the Hunter's Fury? Cutler's going to find one and a second. He caught more damage on the Retro, who will also fall. What a play call for Cutler just to pull out the Hunter's Fury, reading the push coming through, and all the ultimates that were spent for Renegades. Uh, playing a little bit more aggressively over towards B, and Bergy is going to okay. just watch the Shock Dart die, uh, kill him, and that's, uh, I don't know, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that was Bergy's own smoke as well, and if you're the one smoking that position, it becomes fairly obvious that you might walk into it, so well read by TSM there. For Retro as well, misses a couple of opening shots, at least he doesn't take any damage in response, but this is just going to be TSM receiving any sort of opening pressure. Randy will get a kill onto Wardell, but the gun has been guarded. TSM still have a 4v2 currently, and okay, oh, well, this is looking at least somewhat doable now. If Winsome can pick up a weapon, get some mid control, then Renegades can hope for a comeback in this round. Ah, uh, but he decides to not go for the weapon and said push the economy rolling. It's just so hard-pressed to make this play come through. Bergy from the shadows just scouting things out, doesn't see anything, so he'll return to his position over towards Tree. Aggressive play for Winsome. Fortunately, chooses to go to the dismiss as the Nano Swarm may have been the end of him. Paranoia comes through, trying to spam for it. Sabrosa coming out, will find one. Just pushes himself right in front of the Leer, so that's not a consideration as the rest of his team has already made it onto A. Plant will come through, probably without any sort of contest. And Sabrosa on 20 HP once again is playing up close, and the Leer won't get the job done once more. Three for Sabrosa. Potential for another ace. CP2 up top trying to make his way in. Randy will finally put down to Sabrosa. 
but you're going to get the Rolling Thunder to come through just to stall the retake. And this 3v2 is going to be hard pressed considering the Hunter's Fury is still available. CP2 up top, also going to be hit by a fault line. Time is becoming a problem. TSN would be hard pressed to lose this round, and Drone will clean up the final two. And even though Renegades look strong on screen,